I'm Keta Fierro, and I met my friend Lucy Acosta back in 1968 when I joined LULAC Council 335. We soon became great friends, and I soon found out that she was very strict as a member of LULAC. She more or less guided us in our council meetings, and she would not allow any of our members to do anything that was not within the Constitution. She was very strict, but she was a great person that we all admired. She was totally dedicated to the advancement of women, Hispanics, our youth, education, and anything that would help any of us in that category to excel. She was very much involved in the community. She was also dedicated to the advancement and well-being of our elder, elderly and the disabled. That was her job and that was she, she just lived that category. Lucia Costa was active in so many organizations, over 25 board of directors, and um, she received so many awards, not only here in El Paso locally, but state and national. She was recognized by the various organizations that she belonged to, not only LULAC, but um, civil rights and human rights. Lucy was a charter member of the Boy Alumni Association, and it was founded back in uh, oh, about the mid or late uh, 60s. And she was very proud of the fact that she was graduated from Bowie in 1946. She graduated in the top 2% of her class. And although she came from meager beginnings, she strived to do the very best and excel in everything that she did. She was, um, she received many awards, like I said before, and one of them was being LULAC National Woman of the Year twice. She was the first um, woman to become Vice President of LULAC National. She had many firsts, including those in local organizations too. I applaud Lucy for being such a wonderful person to our community, for doing so much for all of us Hispanics. And she didn't limit herself to just Hispanics, but that was her main thrust. And, um, and of course, students at Bowie were top with her. And anything that she could do for Bowie, she did. Too many things to say but um, she was loved by all of us. And we admired her so much. She loved her family. Her family treated her like royalty. She loved her two sons. She was so proud of them. Then came the wives. Then came the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. And she was just so proud of all of them. And she, she did the best she could she and her husband, and they were admired by all of us. I love you, Lucy. My name is Javier Bañales. I am the Chief Executive Officer of Project Amistad. I first met Mrs. Lucy Acosta in 1965, and although that was over 50 years ago, I distinctly remember that day because it was at a meeting of the Lulag Youth Organization. I was a student. Mrs. Acosta was the adult supervisor for the organization. She was in the background observing the Lulag Youth members, guiding, counseling and ensuring that we stayed within the framework of the purpose for our meeting and the purpose of the organization. Mrs. Acosta mentored me as she mentored hundreds of other students and throughout her long life she continued to mentor hundreds of other individuals through her volunteerism, her leadership and her work. Her tireless efforts resulted in her receiving many accolades but more important than the certificates, the awards, is the work that she did and the contribution that she made for our community. 
As executive director of Project Amistad, Mrs. Acosta guided the agency for over 26 years, ensuring that the agency met its goals. And although she started with eight to 10 employees, today the agency has over 176 employees providing social services through an array of social programs in far west Texas. All of that we attribute to the work that she did during those 26 years that she guided the organization. She set the goal for the organization very high, but just high enough so that we would always continue to strive to reach that goal. And along the way, improve the lives of the people that we serve. I know that when Mrs. Acosta looks down at our agency and our community, she is very happy because of the work that is done by Project Amistad. But more importantly, we're very happy because we had the honor and the pleasure of having her guidance and her leadership be a part of our organization. Congratulations, Mrs. Acosta. Historians are gonna write about Paul Moreno as a driving force in the Hispanic uh, movement, as a leader in the Mexican-American movement. Uh, he is known as the dean and the conscience of the Texas House of Representatives. He is the elect, uh, longest elected uh, individual serving 40 years. Uh, you know, he was uh, responsible for opening the doors for many of the Mexican-Americans so that they could get into colleges and universities. He was the uh, driving force uh, for changing the laws that opened those doors, not only in Texas, but throughout the United States. He was also responsible for a lot of the doctors that we have today, a lot of the lawyers and judges that we have today for getting into medical and, and law schools. You know, national leaders, state leaders turned to Paul because of his strong convictions against uh, discrimination and against prejudice. He was a, a driving force uh, in the House of Representatives. Uh, he has always been a driving force uh, for the Mexican-American community. Paul has not only led the way uh, for the Mexican-American community, he's probably led the way for almost all the minority groups as well as the women's groups uh, throughout the United States. He's taken great stands uh, he has preserved and protected the Mexican-American heritage, the values, and the cultures, not only here in the state of Texas, but throughout the United States. If they asked me to probably uh, define who Paul Moreno is, I would say that uh, he's a, uh, an individual that's uh, got great leadership abilities, who was a civil rights leader, who was a humanitarian, who has always uh, been a protector of the common good of the individuals. He's a, a great, always will be a great leader, a colleague, a friend, and overall, a great person. My name is Alicia Chacon, and I'm delighted to be here this afternoon to talk to you about my casi hermano, Paul Moreno. Uh, Paul is a true example to this community of public service, a valued public service with integrity and courage. Uh, Paul has taken stands at many times while he, when he was in the legislature, and he was a voice for the poor, for the underserved, for the elderly, and many times he had to say things that were important and that had, had impact on those that he wished to serve and some applauded his remarks, and many were very angry with his remarks. The same thing in this community that some people have misunderstood his energy and his dedication uh, as being radical, and Paul is by no means a radical. Paul is a, many people don't know, but Paul is a very patriotic individual. He loves this country. As a young man, he left high school to join the U.S. Marines and served in uh, Korea and received numerous medals, including that he was awarded a Silver Star and a Bronze Star, uh, which I think are, is very significant of his dedication at a very young age. Uh, when, he came, when he came back uh, during a visit to El Paso, he had a terrific, ac a ter tremendous accident that left him as a paraplegic. And 
you would have thought, well, Paul, Paul could have retired and just enjoyed his life, and but he he was committed to serve. He he knew that that the underserved, that many were not heard, and they needed a voice, and he wanted to be that voice. He offered to be that voice, uh, and 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 made sure that the issues of uh, those that are underserved were heard and were addressed. Not always successfully, but always there uh, challenging and uh, courageously addressing them. He, uh, Paul has tremendous integrity. When Paul gives you your word or when he's committed to something, you can put your money on it because Paul will come through as as difficult as it might be for him, he will be there. Él mantiene la fe. He truly maintains faith with those that he uh, works with, with those that he wants to serve, and with his friends. Uh, I always know that I can count on him. Uh, como dije, es casi mi hermano. Y hemos uh, trabajado en muchos esfuerzos juntos and they have been very successful. Paul es gente, Paul es pueblo, y él siempre está con la gente, con los, uh, what people need, and those that, he, he, he always said that his, jokingly, that he had a special interest, and that he served the special interest, and his special interest was the education of the young, services for the elderly, and services for the handicapped, and opportunities for the un for the unemployed and underserved. So he always said that he did have a special interest. It wasn't for the rich and it wasn't for the big corporate uh, owners uh, as many people have, but for the people and, and those uh, not served. Uh, Paul has dedicated his life to that. Uh, since a young age, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, even now, he continues to serve and to do as well as, as much as he can. Uh, he's like me, ya, está, ya estamos viejos. But he does all that he can to uh, ad address current problems. And sometimes we find that we are regressing, like with the voting rights, and, so, and Paul is right there on top of it, uh, work, working to be sure that we do not regress, that what we have gained we can keep and we can go forward. The community is very important to Paul. And Paul is recognized uh, not only here in El Paso, but he has made a difference in the state and, and in some ways to the nation uh, because he has always been a voice for Chicanos. He, he always says with pride that he is a Chicano. Uh, and he doesn't apologize for that in any way. Es Chicano. And, and for that, I admire him, that he uh, has always uh, stood with, with people, uh, with young people uh, during, during periods when we had turmoil. He was with them, and he proudly says, que era Chicano y que es Chicano todavía. So he, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful to have a person like Paul. And Paul has been recognized at the state level, at the national level, by numerous organizations for his work. And uh, I think nothing probably makes him prouder than the El Paso School District named a school for him, uh, the Paul, Mor Paul C. Moreno uh, Elementary School. Uh, he continues to visit the school, to be of, of, of assistance to them, to the teachers. Uh, because it has been very meaningful to him to have that school. I'm very excited and happy to have been asked to speak on behalf of my brother and to address and, and, and congratulate him through this video for this recognition. It certainly is deserving. Uh, he deserves this recognition. He's earned this recognition and the gratitude of this community and certainly my gratitude for, for the example that he has set for so many of us.
start again. One, two, three, four. Gloria in With a lot of love. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Rene Castaneda. I'm adjunct professor of music uh, here at El Paso Community College, and it's with great honor and privilege that I'm here to discuss uh, Dr. Lucy Scarborough. Uh, Dr. Lucy Scarborough has been the greatest mentor in my life, and to many people as well. Um, and amongst her great her achievements to the El Paso culture, her greatest achievement, in my opinion, is her personality, is her willing to invest in students, and not just students, but anyone she's involved with, whether it's on her committee, on the, the boards, the various boards that she's in. And to me, that's her greatest asset. Uh, but among her, her many contributions to the city, uh, Dr. Scarbo founded the music program here at El Paso Community College. Uh, she was the first to perform the commencement when it was back at El Paso High School. She played organ. Um, she was a speaker for the 2006 spring commencement where she emphasized the idea of rejecting rejection. Uh, she's also the foundress of the Chicano Arts Festival, which is now currently the El Paso Community College Arts Festival. Um, she's a foundress of the El Paso Civic Orchestra and the El Paso Chopin Music Festival. Another great achievement Dr. Lucy Scarborough has brought to El Paso area is that she's one of three judges for the Chop international Chopin uh, competitions, which is an international global competition of pianists, of world-class pianists, and she's one of three judges, which brings great honor to here in El Paso. And from that, she founded the El Paso Chopin Festival. And through her organization and her involvement, it's just elevated the culture here in El Paso. And her involvement through that and involvement through her students is, is just really been so invaluable to the El Paso culture. And um, again, it's just with great honor that I'm here to speak of her. Dr. Scarborough, I congratulate you on this prestigious award and for being involved in here in El Paso and elevating the culture, not just for the Hispanic community, but for the El Paso community as well. And it's with great honor to be here and privilege to be under your mentorship and your friends. Thank you. Greetings. I'm Leon Blevins, Professor of Government at El Paso Community College. I've been at El Paso Community College since 1972. 
Now today I want to tell you a little bit about the most passionate woman that I met in 1972. Her name is Lucy Scarborough. She was teaching music classes. And I remember that uh, she was very passionate about several things that I want to mention today. One is her family. She told me, and she's told some of you, about being born and growing up in northern New Mexico. She loved her family. She loved the extended family that she had there, and she talked a lot about them. Eventually, of course, she married a man named Paul Scarborough, and he was a professor of education at UT El Paso, and uh, they had a family, children. And she had grandchildren, and she talked a lot about them, and she drew them into different things that she was doing. Family. She also considered those of us at community college a part of her extended family. And we became close friends over the years, and I worked with her on a number of dramatic and musical items. A second passion that I noticed about Lucy Scarborough was music. That's how we formed a friendship. She knew I liked classical music and opera. She helped, asked me to help her produce a one-act opera. And so we became good friends out of our love of music. She told me that she fell in love especially with a composer and a performer in Europe named Frédéric Chopin. She started the Chopin Music Festival. Goodness, this is 2014, and that was 20 years ago. This is the anniversary of her beginning that. Soon after that, she asked me if I could perform as a Chopin lookalike as a greeter for her festival and her performances. She brought in wonderful pianists from around the world, a passion for music. I remember the first graduation at community college. It was at El Paso High School. There were 28 graduates, and she opened the, the processional and played an organ at El Paso High School Auditorium. And then she played after that the recessional. Later she performed for thousands of people, formed a civic orchestra to perform at graduations. Then finally, she has a passion for teaching. She wanted to pass on and she still wants to pass on what she has learned that others can learn because she knows that education can make a lifetime difference in someone. She is a passionate woman even today and we honor her at this mentor's dinner as one of the outstanding, not only Hispanics in El Paso, but persons in El Paso, Texas.
Hello, hi, I'm Dr. Gina Nunez, and I'm an anthropologist at the University of Texas in El Paso. I've known Denise Chavez since I was a graduate student when I was doing my research in Nuevo Mexico. She's a great inspiration. She's a great role model. She's an amazing writer, playwright, poet, and a gran mujer. And I think she's inspired so many of us to write creatively. As a social scientist, her creative writing workshops have helped me, have inspired me to continue collecting the stories of our people and to keep on telling our stories. Our stories matter, and Denise is definitely a phenomenal storyteller. Es un gran orgullo. She's an amazing representative for our community. She's an amazing Chicana writer. She's a great Nuevo Mexicana. And I think she's an all-American, great, great, great representation of what Latinos can contribute to this society and to this country. Felicidades, hermana. Felicidades on the new book, The King and Queen of Comezón. It is un gran orgullo y te queremos mucho. Denise Chavez is um, probably one of the, the most influential writers when I was growing up. Uh, for me, uh, alongside a, a trinity of women, Chicana women, that, uh, that really um, defined for me um, a place in the world. Her, her novels, uh, you know, I remember reading um, Loving Pedro Infante and, <clears throat> and feeling every word, every sentence, um, you know, and it takes place in El Paso and, and here on the border. and, and and she was really the first time that I felt my community in a textbook. And there's something very powerful about that. When you could, um, when you see yourself in, uh, um, inside the pages and, and, and you know that, that the world has access and, and, and you know the world is reading your story, it's very powerful. And so for me, Denise Chavez has empowered uh, women um, uh, for beyond her time, beyond our time, that she is, she is um, forever in our history books, forever part of the narrative defining who we are as Chicanas, and, and she's quite the feisty one, so I'm glad that, that, um, that, that she's one of our heroines. Congratulations, Denise. You are amazing, you are beautiful, and you are powerful. Thank you for paving the way for women all over the world, especially Chicanas here in El Paso, and for letting us know that our stories are meaningful and they're worth telling.